All right, uh, another video. It's been a while. Um, I've struggled to find um, struggled to find inspiration for videos. That's why I've gone away for a while. Not many of you would have noticed, but something happened within the football world, and I felt like I needed to vent a little bit. Um, for those of you that don't know, but where have you been? Uh, the European Super League has been announced with uh, 12 football clubs from England, Spain and uh, Italy all announced to be participating in said competition. Um, it's effectively a closed off competition. I'm not going to go too much into the structure because I don't think it's relevant. Uh, other than the fact that the competition is completely closed off, there is uh, there's the idea. I think there's going to be fifteen people, fifteen teams in total, with five qualif qualifying possibly, and the idea is that relegation promotion doesn't exist, and they just play each other every year, uh, effectively franchising these clubs. Um, I am furious. <laughs> that this is a thing. Obviously, I completely appreciate that everything I'm going to say now is my opinion of what, what uh, of my opinion of, of the of the proceedings of what should be done. And it means nothing, really. It's just an opinion. But I just needed to vent. Um, the idea of this is truly disgusting. It's terrifying. And um, it affects football all over the world no matter who you support this affects you um i'll go into my links with football uh, and who i support and what how it affects my club but i think we should talk about the broader idea and how it affects football from the outset and then talk about my feeling my actual link to football and how i feel about it We'll talk about the, foot, the the reason why I think here this is a terrible idea. Um, I'll start off with uh, sport as a whole. Uh, football is not excluded from this. Sport as a whole is meant to be a meritocracy. And the idea that if you compete within sport at any level, if you do well, you can achieve, you can be the best. If you keep going, if you, if you keep achieving positively and keep competing and being the best you will be the best you will reach that top this european super league uh basically ends that notion it basically makes the idea that uh any club competing within that super league can reach that top and only those clubs nobody else it excludes every every other team you could be a fan of one of the teams supporting your team and they have a bad start to the season and they go do you know what we've started the season poorly we're not going to win what's the point of trying because we're going to get the same output we're going to get the same money coming through to us it makes no difference if we try to challenge now we're not you know we're, we're languishing at the bottom but there is no punishment for being last you don't deserve, I mean, if we look at the clubs involved, I, I don't like the idea of looking at the clubs involved because it doesn't matter who's involved with this. It could be any club. I've heard people talking about, you know, why aren't clubs like Benfica and, you know, Porto and Ajax, why aren't they involved? Maybe they didn't want to be. That's probably true. But if they weren't invited, why weren't they invited? Clubs like Nottingham Forest have won two European Cups. They've won more European Cups than Arsenal and Spurs put together. And Chelsea, actually. And Man City. <laughs> if we put those four English clubs together, between them, they've won one European Cup. Nottingham Forest won two in two years. How are they not involved? Doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. The idea... To, to put that feeling forward makes it makes the people believe that if those clubs were invited, you'd be pleased that this European Super League would be invited is uh, is involved. Nope, 
It doesn't matter who's involved. It is wrong. You shouldn't be invited to pay in participation. You should earn it. That's my first thing. The second thing is that the dream, the beauty of the English, or well, of football league pyramid in this country, in this continent, from from the wider uh, wider spectrum, is that you can start at the bottom and you can move up. The dream is that you you could have a good cup run and maybe play someone big, and then that the finances from that game moves you and and, and can facilitate to move up the leagues. Um, it damages and tarnishes that dream, the Super League, and possibly even kills it. Because football clubs lower down the league now will, will, will the dream to play in the Premier League for some, some clubs that are in lower leagues is that you'll get to play week in, week out. Man United, Man City, Liverpool, these clubs that have, well, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, huge histories to these clubs. And you'll get to play them week in, week out. And you'll also obviously be playing clubs who are not, you know, not quite as big. But I always used to say, to, I mean, I used to, I'm a Bristol City season ticket holder. I used to, used to say to my dad, who I go to Bristol City with week in, week out, wouldn't it be great, like, well, next weekend, who have we got this next weekend? Oh, we've got Everton. Everton are a huge club steeped in history. And to have them coming down to Ashton Gate, wonderful. And that would still happen because Everton aren't part of this thing. But, the idea that the dream of playing the biggest English clubs available goes and tarnishes that dream and makes me feel that that well I'll go into what I feel about Bristol City in a minute but that's not quite the point the idea is that moving up the leagues is tainted now because you can never reach that top because you will not be invited um, smaller clubs down the league, and we've already heard in the past year or so of clubs like Barry and Bolton and Barry going out of existence, are struggling with money, uh, and the amount of money that these clubs are asking for, they could have saved these clubs like that. They could be sorted and their future sustained for decades to come. But yet, yeah, no, these big clubs through greed want more. They want more. But the, these smaller clubs, there'll be more of them that'll go existence because the idea is that if these big clubs move on to their own league where they take all the income and distribute amongst themselves, that doesn't come into the football league pyramid and it doesn't filter down to grassroots, to smaller clubs. It doesn't do that. That is millions, billions being taken away. And, and now smaller clubs will struggle and will go out of existence. It will happen. It could happen to any club. The next thing is that um, the people running this, people like Florentino Perez, who is the, um, I think he was or is the CEO or involved, the president of Real Madrid. High, high names like Joel Glazer, one of the Glazer families who's in charge of, uh, who runs Manchester United, well I say runs, who owns Manchester United. Um, these guys, I know from Joel Glazer, the Glazers don't know football. They don't know football. I think there was something came out about Joel Glazer a couple of years ago that he doesn't even understand the foot offside rule. Now, I mean, understanding offside rule can be complicated to understand. New, new fans get into football might think, might not be able to get their heads around the offside rule. That's fine. This guy isn't a fan of football coming in. He is a man who has seen a, a business opportunity and bought this club because they are the biggest club commercially speaking in the world and trying and is trying to make money in it and all it's done is plunge that club into debt this european super league will alleviate a lot of that debt and now they're going to take control of a whole league do we not see the conflict of interest there it's a massive issue and it just means that money money dominates. It doesn't matter. History, gone. Of the competitions, of the clubs, gone. It doesn't matter. There will be an asterisk against these competitions, against these clubs for the rest of time. I was talking I was watching the Manchester United game yesterday and they will go through the 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 they will go through the stands and you'd see a 
banners are saying Sir Alex Ferguson and just pictures of all the trophies he's won. There'll be big, you know, murals to Busby and to Ferguson and to all the players and just like, and song and, you know, the, the words of songs dedicated to players of Man United's history. It goes, that goes away. All of that means nothing because that has been built up to the point where the rich people have come in and stolen football from those clubs. They've stolen the history of those clubs and will take it for themselves. These businessmen are trying to kill football as we know it. I mean, there's a few reasons. There are several reasons we can go into. There's probably things I'm forgetting. There's probably things that, reasons that, some other clubs and the you know the supporters of these big clubs what they want to, what they want to go into that I'm missing and I I apologize for that but I'm only just venting how what I think of right now. I'm talking about my my link to football. Okay, my link to football. I'm a Bristol City fan. I'm a Bristol City season ticket holder. I have been for the past I think ten years. I think this is the tenth season of holding a season ticket, even though I've not been able to see a game. Um, I love Bristol City. I want them to play Premier League football. That has been where the club has been aiming at sites in the last couple of years. It's always been sort of just below... The, I, I, for as long as I've been alive, Bristol City have never been in that top tier. Never never constantly, you know, consistently played the likes of Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, other than aside from a, a few FA Cup games, obviously Man uh, beat, beat Manchester United in the, the League Cup a couple of years ago, beat Liverpool in the FA Cup around, you know, sort of just under sort of 20, 15, 20 years ago. But that's how often we get to play these clubs. Once in a generation. The idea was that the owners of Bristol City are coming in, are, are investing money in the right places. We're improving the, the football ground. We're improving the training ground. Trying to improve playing staff and coaching staff. That's been up and down. But we've had, we've had moments where we've really tried and, and gotten close in some areas to achieving that dream. And the dream has always been to then play in the Premier League and get to play the likes of Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Leeds, Spurs, week in, week out. Now, it's tainted. As I said before, it's tainted because these clubs don't want to be there with you. They don't, they, they're not, they're not seeing the likes of, oh, Bristol City, a new name. Great. We'll see what they're about. They're like, who's this Bristol City? I don't care. Move on. The big clubs in Europe, we want to play them every week. We don't want to play the likes of Norwich, West Brom, uh, Middlesbrough. These smaller clubs who are got good Premier League histories, bounce around the leagues a little bit, but they they have their seasons. You know, Middlesbrough won the League Cup a few years ago. West Brom had a good little run in the Premier League. They've kind of bounced in between. Norwich City are now back in the Premier League. But uh, all of these six clubs in the Premier League, I'm specifically talking about these six clubs in the Premier League because those are the ones I know better. I'm not going to comment too much on the three Spanish and the three Italian clubs. But those six Premier League clubs, they're looking at you going, yeah, you're not worth our time. Sorry. However, I know there's going to be people out there who know how I feel about football and the team I support. There's also another team, unfortunately, and I know it's problematic. And I know I get sneered at a lot of the time, but I actually do love and follow another football club and that is Manchester United. I always have. I've grown up doing it. My father does it too. We support we support and invest money into Bristol City, but we also love Man United and have always followed them. I can't explain it. It's just a it's a romantic feeling towards that club. I love them. However, I am ashamed at this. Absolutely ashamed. I didn't fully understand the problem that the glaze of the glazers coming in and taking control of the club. I didn't fully understand that at the time. I know a lot of people close to the club did, and there was lots of protests about it. Not that it did anything, unfortunately, but lots and lots of people understood that better than I did. Now I understand. Now I get it. I am so sorry I couldn't have been with you and protesting in the streets of Manchester as you were doing back in 2005. This is embarrassment. Um, I understand that people like me, a man who doesn't come from Manchester, following and loving Manchester United, I know I'm probably part of the problem. However, football 
is global. Manchester United have millions of fans across the world and most Man United fans I have met and have said, you know, I'm not from Manchester, I can't go see Man United every week. I've seen him a handful of times in my life. Most Manchester United fans welcome that. They think, fantastic, it's great that you've come from this place to come and support our club. We, they, a lot of them are privileged to, have, to know people who... China, Australia, support Manchester United from these places. You can't be here, but we're so glad that you are supporting our club across these places and making our club as big as it is. And I understand that a lot of there will be a lot of people who would turn and look at those fans and go, you are the problem. Your money is, is backed up these people and will, they will now reach out to those fans and not the loyal fans who turn up every week. The loyal fans, I think I saw something as well, they are now called the loyal fans who turn up every week who have bought season tickets for years. They are being referred to as legacy fans. And the idea is that the Super League is to appear to a new future of fans. We're talking basically millionaires coming in and basically making the, making the Super League entirely corporate. That's the way I think it's going. I also understand my, my, my love of football. I know my love of football has dwindled in the past couple of years because of this corporate meddling, because of this ever-increasing price that has been attached to football. Bristol City season tickets haven't, haven't been immune to it. They've gone up in price annually. I think this year they are frozen, basically because they couldn't offer football to us and how can they off, get, ask for more money when we've not been able to see a game this year? So they frozen this year. However, price in football has gone up, and you can see that. And it's and the amount of money that's been invested to football, and the fans are not getting any kickback from that at the moment. Nothing whatsoever. But yet, it just waters down and takes out that passion, that joy. And you know, we've known in the past year how football without fans is nothing. It's dead. VAR has had a major part to play with that. The passion is being killed because of VAR. It needs to go. That's another thing for another time. VAR is a massive issue, and it needs to be it needs to be addressed very quickly. But it's that's another issue. That's not what we're talking about today. But my love has dwindled, and I'm telling you, the Super League for me, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. But the Super League for me, if it comes in, my foot, my love for football, gets to a point where I don't love it anymore. I will probably still watch Bristol City. I will not pay attention to Man United if this Super League goes ahead. I will not pay attention. I have, I did a, a video a while ago that showed all, uh, you know, a lot of the football shirts I have. I have a big collection of football shirts. I know that I love football shirts. I am telling you this, if this goes ahead, my love of Manchester United dies and I sell those football shirts. I know it means nothing for me, but lots of people hope well I'm, I'm thinking a lot of people i can't be the only one who feels like this and my love of football will be almost gone i have a lot of, i have lots of other interests i love gaming i love music i love professional wrestling i love cricket those things will take my time i love my dogs i love my fiance i should say that in case they're watching <laughs> but uh my love of football will almost die and i can't be the only one Here's what I think is going to happen. I don't think the Super League will happen. I think this is the biggest clubs in Europe being unhappy with the way that uh, the UEFA plan to restructure the Champions League. They don't think they're getting enough money for their participation. So they are leveraging their size and the money they bring in to UEFA and the domestic competitions to try and get more money from UEFA. That's where I think it's going to go. And that is the way I think it will go. I think UEFA will bow down, unfortunately. I think they will offer more money. The Champions League structure will change. That has been announced today. Again, that's another time for another time. I'm not a huge fan of new structure. However, if you need to earn your place to get there, so be it. I don't care. As long as you're earning your place, it shouldn't be invitation. And that's the way I think it's going to go. They, your UEFA will bow down and pay more money to keep them 
within there and then everyone will just forget about this dangerous dangerous precedent that's what i don't want to happen i don't want uefa to bow down i want one of two things to happen one more than the other i would rather they don't bow down and as they did with this big picture idea a few months ago the big clubs just go okay and back down because they've seen the backlash from people from everyone involved other than the top guys they've seen the backlash and they don't want to do it or they don't back down they carry on and uefa goes and uefa the italian spanish english fa's the premier league the Serie A, la liga efl all of that everyone involved fifa go okay you are no longer recognized as football clubs to us you have formed a breakaway association you are no longer as recognized as football clubs so you are banned from co all competitions involving our names you will be taken out um i wouldn't like the history because the history you can't can't do that that's just that that will remain but i will say any competitions you are existing in you're taken out now the premier league will go down to 14 teams for the rest of this season uh, I think there's 20 teams in the league. The league will drop down to 17 teams. Serie A will drop down to, I think there's 18 teams in Serie A, so that will drop down to 15. And those teams will fight for their places. You'll restructure the league and basically move on without these clubs being in existence. That will damage. I know it will damage the, the, the Premier League and all that. It will damage all of them. But the, these clubs need to realise that they cannot bully their way into these things. And if they are told you are everyone involved is basically banned from competing in our sport and our associations you hope that will have a ripple effect with the people involved and I'll talk about that I think we now need to basically proceed as if I mean in a few days this may blow over I hope nothing comes of it and I hope it benefit and I hope it goes UEFA and FIFA, FIFA need to step up too, where they go, we'll not tolerate this. And uh, you stay and we will, uh, and you will be happy to stay because if you don't stay, you are banned. But if it goes ahead, here's what I think should happen with the people involved, right? And the people involved, I mean fans, players, coaches, those kind of guys. I don't mean the top level guys. There's no talking to them. They want what they want, right? That is that. They want what they want. And I think they're gutless. They will never go in front of a camera and explain this. They are gutless. But we need, as fans, because fans are the ones who should be listened to. Fans, I, I wouldn't take any owner of any club or any organisation, I wouldn't listen to them. The reason for that is because, of course, they're going to back down because it affects their wallets. Football shouldn't, I know football is about money nowadays, but the, the genesis, the idea of football isn't money. It is passion, it is like community. If, foot, if money drives everything, then our soul is, it's all pretty much gone as it is, but it is truly gone. So here's what we do. I'm gonna to talk to the fans of those big six clubs. So there's, six Premier League clubs, so Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham, Man City. The fans of those clubs, if this goes ahead and if this is put forward and it is happening, all of you should cancel any link you have to that club. I know it is hard. I know how much you love those clubs and how difficult it is going to do it be. Cancel your season tickets. Cancel your membership. Don't buy merch or just cut off all financial ties and links with your with your clubs. That is how you talk to them. That is how they listen through money. You have to cut away their ties, and it is sad. I, mean, it it probably won't happen. It will probably be a small percentage of people that do that. Like what would happen with the, when the Glazers took over. There was a breakaway group of about five thousand fans who went, "Okay, we're creating our own club." FC United of Manchester. It was a lovely idea. It's just not quite gathered pace as much as it should have in hindsight. Those fans need to basically cut their ties with the club. Go support someone 
more local to you. There will be a club more local to you than Man United, than Man City. There will be. Salford. And I know there's questions about Salford in their ownership. I understand that. But I'm trying to think of <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, alternatives for you. So that's what the fans of those big six clubs need to do. The players, the coaches, the staff of those big six clubs. I gather that the though the players, the coaches and the staff, most of them are gonna be against the Super League because of the implied implications of what you from FIFA, the sanctions they'll be imposing on those people. You know, not paying for your club at World Clubs, World Cups and things like that. They need to come out publicly and in, in, pub, in a public fashion state their disgust and their um, and the fact that they are against this Super League and threaten to resign there and then unless it is disposed of. If it goes through, if it, if it, if it is not acted upon, I've, I think you should resign. I think these players should resign. I'm talking players like Marcus Rashford and Paul Pogba are going to be watching these uh, videos. Uh, should resign. Um, you're going to take a hit financially. I understand these players are going to take a hit financially. But unfortunately, these players are the kind of guys who could probably deal with a little bit of a financial hit. And go and uh, they are dozens of clubs outside of the Super League who will take you and be able to afford some sort of wage. You'll probably have to take a cut. I understand that. But if, if, if money is not the driver for you and it is, it is the prestige of playing for these clubs and these competitions, these big competitions like the Premier League and the Champions League, then you will understand that, that you will have to take a cut because there is going to be financial implications on every level. Fans of clubs outside of those big six. I have seen a little bit of smugness. I've not been innocent of that either. A little bit of smugness saying, I am so glad that I support my local club. I am so glad that my family took me to see my local club when I was little. Fantastic. Good. Stay local. Keep doing that. Keep supporting your clubs. Keep telling you. Keep telling people how much how you are involved in your club and how you should have a say on how that club is run. However, please do not think this doesn't affect you, because it will. This will affect you. The money not being able to trickle down to you means that your club will be financially weaker. The moment it happens, your finance, your club will be financially worse off. The draw. To, for you and your club goes away. The biggest players, if money is a fine, is a is incentive to these players, they will not want to play for you. They will never want to play for you. Power and money can corrupt entirely. And if you've not got a wholly moralistic owner, and I'm lucky that I support a club that probably does, Steve Flansdown, who is the owner of Bristol City, he loves Bristol City and I can't see him selling the club's soul in the way that the owners of those uh, 12 clubs have. But it could happen to any club. It could happen, you never know. This will affect you in the short term and in the long term. Please come out and just, I don't know, I mean, they're not going to listen. But we need to try and make a voice and hope it breaks through to somebody. As a collective, all football fans need to come together and not buy into this at all. I know I've seen some ridiculous, not ridiculous, people can have opinions on it. That's absolutely fine. I apologise for saying it was ridiculous. People can have an opinion on it. However, <clears throat> To think that it's a great idea, oh, we're playing Real Madrid and then Barcelona and then AC Milan and then Juventus every week. Fantastic. Nope. That will get boring fast, especially when you realise that there is no peril. There is no downside. The min Your team could be in there. Arsenal, Man United, Man City could start the season losing the first three games and go, we're not going to win it this year. Let's 
phone off the rest of the season and not bother. Dull. It becomes dull and that's a waste of a year. That's what happens in these American sports. They don't bother for the rest of the year because they know that in American sports, they actually have an incentive to finish bottom sometimes with the uh, college system of, um, of attracting youth players and the draft system. We won't have that. We won't have that. So you won't be any incentive to finish bottom other than the fact that you won't be punished. So we need to not buy into it. Don't give them money. If Sky Sports decide to take up the, the rights to air this Super League, cancel Sky Sports. If BT Sport decides to take up the rights to air European Super League, cancel BT Sport. I will. I don't mind if that means that I can't watch cricket anymore. I love cricket. I love watching the cricket. However, cricket is not impervious to this corruption. The 100, the IPL, I don't like them. Taking the soul of the sport away, but we're not talking about that. But there are examples, and people love IPL. I understand people love IPL. It's probably people have gotten over that. It's been around for about fifteen years. It's still an awful idea. They've just gotten away with it. Football is a bigger, and need and people need to stand up against it. This has got to be an example of how corporate greed, capitalism, corrupts. And is affecting everything. You turn on the television. You turn on ITV. And you decide to watch whatever dra latest dramas on ITV. Every 15-20 minutes. Adverts will be asking money from you. P companies will be asking money from you. Everything. Every website you visit will have adverts on there. Demanding money from you. Please give us money and we'll give you this absolute crap you definitely don't need. And I am guilty of that as well. I know I am. I'm a complete hypocrite. But money has corrupted everything. And it is corrupting sport from the ground up at this moment. And if the Super League goes ahead, there is no telling where this stops. No telling where this stops in the idea that you could see the death of the English pyramid. It could happen. Everything that all of the clubs could go. There's no football. Here. There's no money here anymore. We need to put everything into the Super League. All of these clubs could merge together and force their way into the Super League. You may not have two clubs. I, from my perspective, two clubs in Bristol may not exist. We're, there's one club who's run pretty well and is not quite getting there. There's one club that has run poorly. And I feel for them, honestly. And I know I shouldn't. I know I'm a, I'm a rival. I shouldn't feel for them, but I do. I'd love for there to be two clubs in Bristol challenging at the top, but there isn't. One of them is struggling. If money keeps on being pumped into the Super League and it isn't coming down to the pyramid, there could be the end of two clubs in Bristol. And by that, I don't mean that Bristol Rovers die. I mean that Bristol Rovers will be merged with Bristol City to make Bristol United. There, it, and it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop there. I know, again, I'm just sp speaking from my perspective. But we need to not buy into this as fans. Because that's who they want. They want fans. They want every fan. They just don't want these legacy fans. They want new fans. People coming from all around the world to buy, oh, look at this amazing Super League that's got all the best clubs in Europe playing each other. How dull. How dull. Football is dying. And this is the poison that kills it. We need to not buy into it. Um... Thank you so much for watching it, if you have, and it's been about over half an hour. Really appreciate it. I just needed to vent. Um, it's truly sickening, and it makes me feel hollow for the state that I've ha enjoyed some amazing moments at football, and there was one day in 2008 where Bristol City were one game away from playing and mixing it with the Premier League. And back then, I thought that was a missed opportunity, but Bristol City are a club that can do it again. And can be up there now I think that was the only opportunity we'll ever have it's terrifying um, if you're watching this feel free to comment your thoughts I may have got some things wrong or you may disagree please let me know um, I need to be more informed if that is the case happy to be proven wrong
Um, I hope that this doesn't happen because, uh, you know, football is, uh, is the soul is being stripped away as I, as we speak. Cheers, Dan.